Hey, I'm John Cannell, and today on Preppy Kitchen, we're making an easy, delicious baked rigatoni. So let's get started. First off, set your oven to 350, grab a large pot, and fill it with water. Place it over medium-high heat, and we're going to add about a tablespoon or so of salt. It's really up to you, but you need to salt your water. It's very important. Your pasta will be so bland otherwise. In fact, okay. While that comes to a boil, it's time for a bit of prep work. Grab an onion, and we're gonna give it a really quick chop. Don't be too precious about it, just get nice even pieces. You'll want four or so cloves of garlic, remove the skin and give them a mince, or remove the skin and grab your garlic press, a tool which I love using in the kitchen. It's such a time saver. The last bit of prep work is to chop two tablespoons of fresh basil. Grab a large skillet and we're gonna place it over medium high and get to work. And we're gonna add about a tablespoon of olive oil and get it nice and hot. Baked rigatoni is such an easy weeknight meal, and the nice thing is, if you had some time on Saturday or Tuesday, you can assemble everything, pop it into the fridge, and then leave it overnight, and bake the next day. So easy, and it's really satisfying and hearty and just full of flavor. It's hitting all the notes. My olive oil's shimmering, so I know it's nice and hot. Now it's time to add our chopped onion in. Oh, very hot. Along with my garlic cloves, I'm pressing them right in. And just stir, stir, stir so nothing burns. And we're gonna soften everything up before we add the meats in. I'm still stirring, but my water's come to a boil, so it's time to add our 16 ounces of rigatoni right in. Cook your onions and garlic for about five minutes or until it's nice and tender. But you do not want it to burn, so, you know, you don't walk away, just keep stirring. You know I cleaned my stove? The like minutes before making this video because it looked like a disaster and it's already looking horrible. Hmm. It's not fair. My onions and garlic are looking nice and soft, so it's time to add a pound of ground beef. Let's make some room for it. And a pound of ground sausage. This is a nice spicy hot one, but you can use your favorite. So today I'm using ground beef and a pork sausage, but you could use any of your favorite meats. Go for two pounds, one that's full of flavor and one that's ground. So you could use ground turkey or ground chicken, but if you're using either of those, go for the highest fat possible. So ground dark meat, not like the super lean kind because that'll get really rubbery. If you really want a punch of flavor, you could add some pancetta as well. My pasta is like begging to boil over, placing a wooden, sp wooden spoon on top so that'll help things out. My meat's all browned, so now we're gonna add 24 ounces or one jar of your favorite marinara sauce right in there. Along with a tablespoon and a half of Italian seasoning. And the basil we chopped earlier as well. Now stir this all together so it's nice and combined. We're gonna simmer this for five minutes, then go on to the next step. Once your sauce is complete, before it simmers, give it a taste, And now you can decide if it needs a little bit of salt or a little bit of pepper. It's totally up to you. and It depends on the type of sausage and your marinara. So go ahead and just give it a taste and add accordingly. My mixture just needs a little bit of pepper. And it should be great. This dish is such an easy way to get these big, bold flavors. It's really comforting and this is a variation of a dish my mom used to make on the regular when I was growing up. And you don't have to use rigatoni, you could use any pasta that you like. We even used orzo sometimes. I hope that doesn't offend anybody. But it's so delicious and like you could just kind of memorize the recipe once you make it and make it again and again and again and with variations as you please. I've been working away here, but I think my pasta is just about done. It looks nice and al dente. You don't want to overcook it. It should have a nice bite to it because it'll continue baking in the oven and absorbing all that sauce. If your pasta is overcooked, it's totally saturated with water, it's gonna get mushy and it won't absorb the flavor as nicely. My rigatoni is perfectly al dente, let's drain it up. Always blow the steam away. Steam burns are horrible. And now we're gonna carefully add in the sauce. And we're gonna stir to combine. There we go. My pasta is perfectly al dente, so it's not gonna fall apart, but Sometimes mistakes happen. I'm just putting it out there. All right, that's all combined. Set it aside and grab, oh, like why is there paper on my hand? I forgot to grate the Parmesan. So 
Do that or take the pre-grated Parmesan from your fridge. You want a cup of grated Parm, which is about 85 grams, but you could add more, it's up to you. All right, beautiful, now we can assemble. So grab your nine by 13 inch dish. If you're worried about sticking, you can butter it, grease it, or spray it with baking spray. I think it's gonna be just fine. The assembly is super easy. Go ahead and add half of the pasta mixture right into your dish. If you wanna sneak some veggies into this, by the way, after the onion went in, you could add carrots, bell peppers, mushrooms, and then some spinach could go in at the very end to get wilted. All of those will be great. Really depends on what you want and if you have it in your fridge. All right, nudge this into an even layer. I have three cups of shredded mozzarella. I'm gonna add half of that right now and half of your parm, which is about half a cup or more. It's cheesy, delicious, and amazing. Now add the rest of your pasta, smooth it out into an even layer, and top with your remaining cheeses. Last of my cheese, my casserole dish will go onto a baking sheet to catch any potential drips, and this will bake for 40 minutes until the top is golden brown and the sauce is bubbly. In you go. One side of the oven, allow to cool for about 15 minutes, then garnish with basil and you're ready to enjoy. Hearty, cheesy, and packed full of flavor. I hope you get a chance to make this easy recipe, and if you like this video, check out my pasta playlist.